Um, since we're a small group, feel free if you want to uh, turn on cameras or unmute yourself at any point, feel free knowing that you will be on the recording that will end up on our website. Um, otherwise, you can also ask messages, uh, questions in chat. Um, uh, this is going to be relatively uh, um, quick um, <laughs> uh, uh, overall, uh, I think, but we'll see. Um, uh, so we'll just go from there. Um, okay. So some of this might be a repeat for anybody who joined us for the first meeting, but I'm going to do it anyway in case we have people who are new um, uh, who didn't catch that one or what have you. We're talking about the uh, library salary survey. So library salary survey, uh, the department hasn't uh, done one of these as far as I know ever. Um, there certainly hasn't been a statewide one done in a while. VLA has done them uh, previously. Um, most, on the other hand, most states do one as part of their annual report. Uh, we just historically haven't done that. Um, within the states, it varies dramatically what people ask for. Uh, some of them are really short. Some of them just ask about directors. Some of them ask like a few series of positions. Some of them break it down very narrowly and ask about 50 different positions. Some of them don't just ask you to fill in the blanks on your positions. Anyway, there's a lot of variation. Uh, the main thing that I've heard from other states, though, is that it is consistently the thing that people want the most often. Um, that uh, of, of the data that's in the public uh, library and your report, it's the one that's most asked for. So we've been trying to put something together um, the last uh, year or so, and with a lot of um, uh, back and forth, this is what we come up with. It's going to be a work in progress. So next year or next time we do it, it could be totally different, but we wanted to get the ball rolling. So uh, here are a few um, main points about the report. Uh, number one, it is a two-part online survey that's intended to document salary, benefits, and related information for public libraries. Part one, which you may have already heard about, is just about directors. Um, it just covers uh, pay and benefits for directors. Part two, which is the one we're focusing on today, is for all other staff members. Um, it, the surveys are to be filled out once per library. They're not for individual staff members. They're for the director or whoever the director wants to work on it. Uh, okay, uh, thing two. Uh, the hope is the results will be useful to individual directors, boards, and staff members, as well as to the uh, Department of Libraries. Um, so the, as I said before, majority of states include some version of this. Uh, the data, once we're done with it, data will be released publicly and will include two pieces. First, there's going to be a spreadsheet, uh, which is going to include all the submissions um, with their library name and all the data they submitted. So your um, name and everything that is submitted to the survey. The second part is just going to be a bunch of averages based on population budget, hours, experience, basically everything that we think we can pull out that is going to be useful. It's going to be in averages. So uh, related to that, the default is going to be for the library name to be included with the data. Um, however, libraries can choose to make their data anonymous, and they can choose to make part one anonymous, part two anonymous, or the whole thing anonymous. If you do it anonymously, what happens is um, you won't appear in that spreadsheet spreadsheet that is library name and data, you just won't be in that. You will, however, get added into all the averages. So you will still help make um, sort of the general data around all of those. Uh, no one else will be, we will still be able to see your name because it's going to be in, you're going to have to put it in the survey, uh, but uh, that data will not be publicly released in any fashion. So um, that's, um, so that's the a live, individual library's prerogative. Um, uh, let's see. You can also, uh, if you change your mind before we publish, you can just let me know and I can change it to whichever the, the reverse is. Um, okay, so that's anonymity. Um, uh, furthermore, uh, this survey is totally voluntary. I think maybe people have gotten that, but if you haven't, it's totally voluntary. It is not like the annual report, which everyone is supposed to fill out. Uh, this is uh, this is a choice for each library. Uh, the more data we have, the, be the better and more useful it's going to be. But we're not um, trying to pressure anyone to fill it out, besides the fact that we've made it available. Um, OK, uh, let's see. Um, oh, additionally, along those same lines, uh, except for the your name, your name and the library's name, everything on it is um, uh, voluntary. So if there are questions that you either do not feel comfortable answering or cannot answer, just skip them. 
that's totally fine. Whatever data we get, we get. So um, there are no required uh, questions that won't stop you from submitting the whole thing. Okay, uh, next, survey is long. Um, and uh, the first part had 25 questions. The second part has 65 questions. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but um, there is no way to save it partway through, unlike the annual report. So you're gonna have to do it in one sitting. Um, we've created worksheets for them. Um, and I think that probably the best idea is to fill out the worksheet ahead of time so you have the data and then fill it out all in one sitting. Uh, you can do it however you want, but I think that's going to be less annoying. If you know your internet cuts out three quarters of the way through or something, you have to start again, you'll have it all in one place. Uh, all right, so um, we would like you to answer as of today, there's no, it's not a rep weird reporting period like the annual report. Um, and we'd like you to answer as though all budgeted positions are filled, even if they aren't at the moment. So imagine you're fully staffed. Answer it uh, in that fashion if you can. Um, okay, so as you go through uh, part two, and we'll do that in a second, um, it's broken down by categories. We sort of lump people into categories, and I'll talk about that more in a second. If you don't have any employees in that category, you can say, the first question is, do you have any employees? And you say no, and you don't have to fill out that section. So the report is as long as 65 questions, but for many libraries, it will be considerably shorter for part two. Uh, additionally, probably nobody is in this boat, but um, who knows, if you don't have any employees at all, you don't need to fill out section two at all. If you are a single person library and you have no other employees, the sales section is unnecessary for you. You just need to fill out section one. Um, okay. Some questions in here ask for starting pay range as though the position were offered today. I know that's a difficult question that you won't necessarily have sitting around if you haven't filled the position lately. Um, and we went back and forth a lot on that. There was a lot of interest in getting a starting pay range. And our thinking is that if in some cases the starting pay range is from last year, in some cases it's from 10 years ago, that's not really useful data. So instead we decided to ask for this uh, sort of more challenging data, which is what would it look like if you were filling it right now, knowing that maybe not everybody can answer that. Um, so sort of do your best. Um, and uh, as always, ask us if you have questions. There are a number of questions that ask for an average um, of everybody in that category. So if you have three people in that category, what we'd like you to do is add up whatever it is, their hours or their pay, and then divide by that number. We don't want you to estimate. We ideally don't want any estimates on this thing if we can avoid that. Um, timeline. Uh, part one of the survey is, uh, is has been open. Um, it's been open for almost two weeks. Part two launches today, so it's open now. Uh, the entire survey is closing April 15th um, because I figured we need to be to remember deadline. So uh, everything needs to be in by the end, uh, end of day, um, end of business on Friday, April 15th. Uh, when you submit one or two, you will not get a confirmation email because MS Forms doesn't do that, or at least it doesn't do it for the way we have it set up, unfortunately. So if you ever need a confirmation that uh, this or any of our other MS Forms, uh, Microsoft Forms forms went through, email me and I can look at it and I'll say, yes, we have it. Uh, and then I'll say this three or four times, but as always, if you have questions about this at any point when we're not on a webinar, um, please get in touch with me. Just email me and I will answer it. No question is too small, too large, too weird, too confusing, anything. Um, I, and I may not have an immediate answer for you, but I will find one. So that's that. Um, I'm gonna, let's see. So next we're gonna hop into, I'm just gonna march through the survey. Um, but does anybody have questions that they would like to ask before we do that on, on, on things that we've talked about so far. If you do, either put them in the chat or you can just unmute yourself or turn the camera on or what have you. And there'll be, there'll be more time for questions at the end, obviously. We have a new person joining, so I'm gonna let them in. Um, okay, so that was sort of the intro. Now we're just going to, um, March through um, through the um, the form itself. Um, again, this online form uh, looks much like a lot of the surveys you've seen from us recently. I am going to do a screen share. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong button for that. And want... Come on. Okay, here we go. All right. 
So that is, um, hopefully people can see the salary survey right now. Uh, if you can't, uh, please shout and let me know. And, uh, and of course, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna show the preview version. So this is what it's going to look like when you fill it out. Again, there are 65 questions in part two, but depending on um, if there are categories of employees that you don't have, and I suspect there are going to be, um, you don't need to fill out that section at all. You just say no, and then you, you should not even see it. It uses um, branching, so this question should just not appear for you. Okay, so uh, it asks, basically, we're talking about salary um, and then benefits and a little bit about um, requirements for the position. We um, Different states have used different strategies for breaking people into categories. As I said before, in some cases, it is very um, limited. In some cases, there are um, a million different, there are something like 45 different possible positions. Based on the size of the state and wanting to get usable data, we decided we would, and just because it's the first time we did it, and we want to make this shorter, we broke it into a few categories. Um, so there are not, there are not um, very, very granular breakdowns for positions. And uh, we'll go through that right now. So first off, the first category is supervisors and equivalent. So it's basically mostly people who are in a supervisory role. Um, assistant directors, uh, people who are called librarians, other management positions that are in there generally go into this category. Um, so the next tier down from that is what we called, um, we struggled with, I struggled with naming on this for a long time, library staff with specialized responsibilities. Um, so this means people who have uh, some level of significant training to do what they do, uh, don't necessarily, may or may not have uh, an MLS. Um, but that there is significant training beyond running um, uh, circulation. Uh, so cataloging, programming, circulation management, technology, ILL, etc. Basically, anyone who has had to learn a bunch of stuff to do this thing, they are in that category. Next category is administrative and support staff with a non-library focus. A lot of your libraries may not have anybody in this camp. Um, it tends to be larger libraries, but the larger libraries may have folks who do um, HR or security or maintenance. And these are people who are on under the library budget. Um, uh, again, some, some people may have them, many people may not. Uh, next, what we call library assistants or clerks. These are people who predominantly do um, work at the CERC desk and do, um, do CERC, uh, you know, engage with patrons, maybe help with programming, um, things like that, but are predominantly not doing a lot of uh, cataloging, programming, et cetera. Uh, next series, below, next level below that is shelvers or pagers, um, or pages. Uh, most of you, many of you don't have paid shelvers or pages, but if you do, that this is where they go. Uh, okay, and then, so those are the categories that we've broken it down into. Uh, and then after that, we ask a few other questions, total number of staff, general library questions, final questions. So I'll show you what that looks like now. First off, uh, your library name, your name, whoever is filling it out, and your email address. So I have to put something in here to um, get past this. But again, these are the only required question. Well, the next one is the only other required question. Uh, which This is whether you want to anonymize your data. And anonymizing your data, again, means that you do not show up in the spreadsheet version of this. You're, otherwise, it's your name, um, you know, the um, uh, Josh's library, and then it's all of the data that you responded uh, to appears in the spreadsheet. The default is to include that. If you choose not to do it, you will check make our data anonymous and you will not be in the spreadsheet. We'll just end up in all the averages. Um, and you can, um, again, you can decide to make one part anonymous, another part not anonymous. Um, you could say that I want the director data to be public, but I think the staff data is gonna be anonymous. Whatever decision you want, um, that is totally fine. Uh, so I'm going to say include our data. So we jump ahead. Okay, so basically we're just going to march through each of the categories and the questions within are almost identical. So we're talking about supervisors and equivalent. Um, uh, assistant director, adult children's librarian, other management level jobs. Do you have any positions in this category? If you say no, you don't have to answer any other questions here, but we're going to say yes. Okay, first up, number of positions in this category. Uh, that seems straightforward. How many do you have in there? 
Uh, next, average hourly pay in this category for positions that are paid hourly. So a couple of these positions, a couple of these categories give you the option of hourly pay or salary in the case that you have um, one or the other, or maybe both. Um, put your, if you have, um, put it under the appropriate one. Don't double, don't count them under both. So if you have salary, people put them under salary. If you have hourly, people put them under hourly. Um, okay, so the first one is average hourly pay. So for that, if you have three employees, you add up their current hourly pay, divide by three, put that in here. Um, we would like, uh, oh, um, pay should be listed as um, in dollars and cents um, for uh, hourly pay and as a, you know, as 20,000, 40,000 um, number for uh, overall salary. Okay, so average hourly pay in this category and then starting hourly pay range in this category. So for this one, it's a little bit complicated. Um, what you want is you figure out the employee in this category who make who would have the lowest starting pay, and that is the low end of the range, and then figure out the employee who has the highest starting pay, and that is the high end of the range. So basically, we, we're looking for the starting pay, um, the uh, low end of the starting pay for the lowest paid employee to the high end of the highest paid employee in this category. So this gets asked for each of the um, each of the separate categories. Yeah, you could, it may be easiest just to write it down for everybody, but whatever approach you want to use, we're, we're looking for low to high range. And again, we know that this is a somewhat challenging question and that it may be tricky to come up with, but we thought that if we could, it's the most useful way for the information to be structured. Okay, next, uh, annual salary in this category for people who are salaried. If you have salaried people, um, you put them under here. Uh, in this case, it's their current. And then it's the same thing. It's salary range, low to high. Uh, so for for the ranges, you just want to put the first number, put a dash, put the second number. It um, It's just a text field, so it'll take it however you put it in there. But that's basically what we're aiming for. Next, average hourly, uh, average paid hours per week. So just figure out what the average of the employees in this category is um, and go from there. How many of these positions required an MLS or MLIS when hired? So of the positions in this category, how many of them when filled um, did you ask for a, uh, did, was it, did you require it? And then the next question is preferred. So if it's something, it was preferred or recommended or something like that, it would go in the second category. Whereas if it was 100% required, you needed to have an MLS to be in this position, it would be in the first category. Um, and again, do your best on those. Uh, okay, then we talk about benefits. Um, the uh, how many of these positions are offered health insurance coverage? So, uh, much like the um, director question, this is basically the question: is does the uh, library or town or what have you uh, contributing to the um, to their uh, health insurance coverage? Do they provide it with or without an employee contribution, or is there a stipend or something else? Is the town slash library um, basically paying for some portion of the health insurance. Um, and the question is whether it's offered, not whether it's taken. So if for some reason someone does not, it is offered, but they don't take it, we just want, we want to know that it was offered. Uh, okay, same situation. Uh, okay, paid vacation time. Do they receive, how many of them receive some form of paid vacation time? Um, if they receive um, combined paid time off, if that's the, the structure you use where Vacation time and sick time is bundled together. You should you should count them. Say that as a yes. Basically, is there some? Do they receive some kind of paid vacation time? Uh, okay. Next is uh, are they offered some sort of employee employer contribution towards retirement? Do they have a, a pension that is partially supported by the uh, employer? Is it, do they participate in VMERS? Is it a 401k where there's some level of match or employer contribution? If they uh, if, for example, they say you can do a 401k, but we're not paying for any of it, that means they're not doing anything. So that's a no. But otherwise, if they are, if the employer kicks in some amount of money, um, that's a yes. Uh, I'm just going to jump back. I forgot something for health insurance coverage. If there's a health savings account, that does not count. We we want a traditional, some form of a traditional health model that uh, the the town or library is paying for. Okay, so that's the end of um, uh, supervisors and equivalent.
The next one is staff with specialized re responsibilities, and it basically asks the same questions. Um, it, it is structured exactly the same as the previous one, uh, both uh, pay, benefits, experience, etc. It looks identical. So uh, just to reiterate, staff with specialized responsibilities are any staff who need significant training in order to do whatever it is that they are focused on. Cataloging, ILL, programming, circulation management, technology, anything else in that vein um, is, is included in this category. The next category is administrative and supportive staff with a non-library focus. Um, a lot of libraries won't have any of these um, under their budget. That's we're, we're, again, we're asking for people who are under the library budget, not somebody who's over at the town who also does a little bit of this for you. Um, so that can include people who do administration, HR, development, building maintenance, security, anything else that is predominantly not a library focused job. If that is their core, you want to put them under here. Uh, these specific questions are all totally the same, except that it does not ask if they have an MLS or an MLIS because it's assumed that that's not totally relevant. Um, OK. Otherwise, totally the same. Jump to the next category, library assistants slash clerks. This is staff who um, uh, have a main focus on circulation, shelving, and pro helping with programs, but does not include those who only do shelving, which is broken into another category, and does not uh, include people who are predominantly doing something that requires more training. Um, yes, so that's um, uh, that's this category. Uh, the questions are very similar. It does not ask whether they have an MLS or an MLIS. It also assumes that they are not salaried. Um, if uh, talk to me if you have people who are library assistants who are salaried. If, for example, you, your structure is that everyone is salaried, um, but we assume that that was generally not the case. Uh, OK, same questions. How many of them receive health insurance? How many of them receive paid vacation time? How many of them receive some sort of form of retirement? Um, let's see. OK, next, shelvers or pages. We assume, uh, my impression is that the majority of the libraries in the state do not have paid shelters, but some definitely do. And sort of for completeness sake, we included this. It is basically structured the same way as the other ones um, ask the same questions. So next, um, uh, total number of staff. Uh, so this is sort of, it's kind of repeating because we could add up everything, but we just wanted. So we ask, what is your total number of full-time staff? In this context, we're including everybody who's 30 hours or more a week as full-time staff. Um, we broke this out because this is a number that gets asked a lot and we don't have good data on it. So we have no idea how many, we first off have no idea how many employees are at libraries in the state, but we definitely don't know how many are full-time and how many are part-time. So we uh, this asks the total number of full-time staff, total number of part-time staff using the same system. Everybody that you've been talking about in the survey. Uh, okay, and next, then we have a few general library questions. Um, these first ones say, uh, it's a little bit rep repetitive, but if you offer health insurance to staff, is there a minimum number of hours per week? So is there just sort of a benchmark? Everybody who's above 30 gets it and nobody below 30 gets it. Um, and if you know what that number is, you can just enter that in. Uh, same thing for vacation time and for retirement. Uh, okay, la uh, next. Um, do you offer sick leave for staff who work less than 18 hours per week? Sick leave is uh, uh, in Vermont is required for over 18 hours um, or PTO or something else like that. But do you offer it to um, people who work less than 18 hours per week? Uh, OK, uh, we have a question about whether library staff participate in a union. Um, so if they do and you know that they do, please say yes. Um, and if um, they do not, um, just say no. Um, uh, then these next questions are, uh, if you say no, they will not appear. But if you do have a union, is it a local independent union or a national affiliated union, if you know? And then lastly, does it include other municipal staff? Again, yes, no, or I'm not sure is totally valid. Uh, only relevant if you, have, if you are unionized in some fashion. Uh, okay, two last questions. First off, are there other additional uh, employee benefits that we didn't ask about that might be included? Things like flex time, uh, paid childcare, subsidized housing. Um, 
there are a few places where that's a, a, a thing because of the building the library has. Um, uh, if they offer an opt-out incentive for if you don't participate in the insurance program, anything else that might sort of um, uh, sweeten the pot, so to speak, that uh, that gets offered but is not on our list, you can just feel free to include it. It's just a text box, so you can put anything in there. And then last but not least, do you have additional comments or questions? Um, any sort of feedback, anything you want us to know, you can put in there. You can also just email me it. But um, uh, that is that is the end of the survey. So I'm going to hop out of my screen share um, and come back here. And now um, we're open to questions. I'm going to answer one question from last time before that came up, which is about subs. Um, if we're subs, we're mostly interested in subs if they regularly have sort of regular time every week. Um, uh, if their if they're hours bounce all over the place, if you use them as needed, we do not are not going to put them in here. But if you say, oh, this sub works eight hours every week, then we want them in as regular staff. But um, so that was the first question that popped into my head from last time. Um, but uh, all right, questions. Any questions you can um, put in the chat. You can unmic yourself and say it, whatever you'd like. Josh, this is Marie. And I Hi, have Marie. Hi there. Um, so just to clarify again, this is just for paid. This is not involving any of our volunteers that do some of the same work that is described on this survey. Correct. You you are correct, and that's we that's a that's the decision we made for this year is that the only person who uh, the only volunteer that we care about in the survey is if you have if, if places who have a director who is unpaid. Um, but otherwise, your volunteers, if you were, um, they are not included in this, and that's something we may think about next year what that looks like. But this time around, um, we don't include them uh, if they're unpaid. Okay, and then. Question two is, can you talk about the distinction a little bit more between those first two categories yes. of staff? Like, so I thought initially my children's librarian would fall under library staff with specialized responsibilities, but it sounds like actually maybe it's the other category. So that's definitely a fine line. I think we, um, uh, it's, uh, I think that to some degree in many, in some cases people with the light, Title library don't necessarily have supervisory um, duties, but have a certain uh, kind of more oversight uh, was the intention with that. Um, I think to some degree for co coherence sake, if you have somebody sort of who is a librarian, I would probably put them under the first category um, in this case, but we can talk about that. It was because we're only lumping people into these few categories, there is definitely overlap. Um, we okay, so the, let's let's talk about it though. So the idea was that it was people who have who make sort of make bigger decisions was the idea that um, in some ways that that have more maybe not actually a supervisory of other staff, but a more um, supervisory role over the library as a whole is who we we're trying to break out. Um, and I think at the end of the day it's um i guess i would probably because i use the word library in there i would probably lump them into group one just because that's what other people are going to do and if we can decide later uh, if we find that our data is getting weird this time around that might be something we could look at for next year but no I, that that totally helped clarify and it's also just making me think through the the role that this person is in even like when she's often at the library. If I can't be at the library, she'll be there. Like Saturdays, she is the one in charge. And there is a volunteer she's supervising. And, you know, there the definitely is a, a very clear supervisory role that I hadn't really kind of thought through. So thank you. It, it, well, and it's, I think that it is challenging and especially challenging at small libraries because everybody has to do everything a lot of the time um, is the unfortunate truth. And um, so it, we're, uh, I think this is our approach this time around, and it's a sort of a best effort. But you know, um, yeah, I think we may we may have to continue to play around with that. Is is the reality? Because if we may decide we're like, well, everybody's sometimes in charge of the library. <laughs> so, uh, but that's our approach this time around. 
um, other questions uh, about this part of the survey, survey in general, what the what the end data, I could elaborate on what the end data will look like, but I hope um, hopefully gave it the general gist. I will say that once we publish the data, again, so it's going to have the spreadsheet, but then a bunch of averages. Um, the averages, I'm going to pull out everything that we have enough data to use um, that seems like it might be useful. But I'm also all ears if other people say, hey, could you tell me um, by some other category that I'm not thinking of? By um, I'm thinking, you know, uh, population of the town, um, budget of the library, um, total hours for the library. Um, maybe even staff hours, um, total staff hours, and then uh, things like experience on the, the, the survey side. But if people think of other things, it will be uh, pretty easy to break them out. Oh, and then uh, geography. I didn't say geography, but that's totally one. We'll probably use counties to break it out. Um, and then, oh, and then um, go from there. But uh, any other questions or thoughts? Uh, if you think of things later, obviously you can just let me know and email me and I will, uh, if it, I'll answer the question. If it seems like something everybody needs to know, we will share it out afterwards. Okay, well, uh, I think that's it for now. Thank you everybody for attending, really appreciate it. Um, and we'll be posting this online in short order. Uh, and just going from there, again, uh, we have until April 15th to fill out the whole thing. Uh, the uh, this part will be open is open as of today and uh, we'll just all do our best with it um, first time around so going to be a few confusing things all right thanks everybody have a great day take care y'all turn off the recording